What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio1Tutorials.com and today I'm going to be showing you how sampling is so simple in Studio One. What's up everybody, it's Concrete Zebra with Craftmaster Productions and Studio One Tutorials.com. And you know, recently I kind of had a little production breakthrough. Uh, if y'all kind of been following my videos for the past year and a half or so, you know that I am not the most enthusiastic sampling producer. It's not something um, that I really enjoyed doing. And it's just because um, honestly, I was making the stuff way too complicated it wasn't fun for me you know the, the way that I produce I'm all about speed and efficiency and um I found a way to make it easier on myself and I'm going to share it with you guys so I have this little track up that I that I was doing last night All right, so enough of that. Um, basically, reasons why I didn't like sampling before is because um, it was it was doing like a lot of loop stuff. It to be like looping something up, looping somebody else's music up is pretty boring. Um, it does it all the time, leave you a lot of uh, freedom to go and create it and do whatever you want to do. You kind of stuck with it, the confines of a loop. You and um, I like to have a lot of different changes in my arrangement like this verse right here you only hear that verse for the first verse the second verse sounds completely different and the third verse the third verse is another different sample part so i was able to find something that um helped sampling fit into the principles of my workflow and it just focused around making this whole process easier now you guys know or maybe if you don't know studio one has a function it's called split it grid and what this does is it could either do it with midi notes or it could do it with a region where you set um, your grid resolution to say one bar right and i could take and, and highlight something in the arrangement or the piano roll go to you know, we could go to event and select split a grid and it's going to chop that into one bar pieces. All right. So I went ahead and I realized, okay, well, I could do that with an entire song. I could just chop this up into one bar pieces. Now, typically the way I had approached sampling before, I was making it way too, way too hard on myself. I was um, you know, back like when I had machine and stuff, I would have to sit there 
and listen to the whole song and go in there and find the chops and then you know just be like oh where do i chop is the you know is this the right spot and then say i find something that i do like the way that it sounds but then it doesn't sync up with the beat you know i was having problems with that and um it just wasn't fun so what i did was i thought about what my problems were right i thought about okay my problems are that first of all stuff wasn't syncing up with the beat so how do you solve that now the first thing that you want to do is import your sample to the arrange window so let me just go ahead and grab this and really the first thing that you want to do before that is make sure that you are sampling an excellent song um, i can't stress enough how important it is to sample a song that is great um you know you can't just you can't just chop up anything and make it work it, it's got to be it's got to be great music sung by great singers played by great players produced by great producers and that is just going to yield you a much better product now after you've loaded up your sample into the arrange window you're going to go ahead and just chop that first bit of silence off zoom all the way in and this is really important for um for figuring out the bpm because this is everything right here if you if you do all this right it's going to make sampling so easy on you so i'm going to zoom all the way in And that's going to allow me to get a more accurate picture of what the BPM of this track is. Now, there's a couple different ways to find your BPM. Um, sometimes it works at Belladine, but I like to do it the most old fashioned way, which is to set up a loop point and adjust the speed of the track until you catch the perfect loop. And that's how I determine the BPM. So I just go ahead and set my loop point up, press C to turn it on to loop and just play the song. All right, so that's not a good loop right there. I'm seeing a transient here. I'm thinking that might be the start of my ninth bar. So let me go ahead and try that out and just see how that turns around. All right, you see, that's that's it right there. And it's as easy as just finding that. Now, to be more accurate, I wanna make it so that this transient starts right here at the beginning of the ninth bar. This is really important. So I'm gonna notice if I turn my speed down that drags this to the left. If I turn it up, that drags it to the right. So I'm gonna turn this down and then I'm going to input a value, say 106.7 and see where that puts this transient. All right, that puts it too far to the right. So I'll go to 106.2. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So I'll go 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0.6. That's pretty close right there. Let's see what happens if I do 6.2. try six three okay that's that's pretty accurate right there so let's go ahead and hear what this sounds like So you see just you see how the transients are lining up nice and remember we're going to chop this we're not looping it so it isn't important for 
this to turn around perfectly without a pop or a clip. What's important is that these transients are lining up with the beginning of the bar because these are eventually going to be like notes that we play um, inside sample one. So after I've done that and I've got, you know, I've got my chops line or I've got my transients lined up the way that I like it. I'm going to go ahead and just shorten the song to maybe 41 bars because I'm going to sample a, a big portion of the of the song, but um, I'm going to change this to bars. But I don't I, I don't think I need a. Uh, I don't think I need more than 41 slices. You know, that's this is this is a big section of the song. Um, if you want it to be extra precise, you could go ahead and go into your um, go into your transient detect, okay, and analyze this. Let's see. That is. Let's let's lower the threshold a little bit. You know, we'll make it so it's just it's just catching. This isn't always gonna work well, but you could just you could lower the threshold, and then go ahead and quantize this. Listen to it. You make the sunshine. All right, and then once you have that. Again, you'll see why this is important. Once you have that, you can go ahead and close this window, highlight this, press Control B to bounce it. What's that? What's that's gonna do is that's gonna save your changes, and it's gonna make it so that the computer doesn't have to remember to stretch the audio. It's gonna print it as stretched, which is gonna save you a lot of CPU. So now that you have this. Um, you know, typically when you play samples on a sampler, you're going to want to pitch them either up or down. I mean, you don't have to, but that's going to be something that's going to be something that you do. So in order to do that, all you have to do is right click on it, click transpose and, you know, go up a few semitones and see what you got. <laughs> Alright, see that sounds cool. Notice how you get this little icon in here that's telling you that the computer is working. So you want to make sure that once you've got it uh, transposed the way you want, go ahead and press Control B again, and that will that will you know get rid of that, and the computer will have to process. Now um, you want to kind of start thinking about what BPM you want to work at. You know, if I'm doing it, it's going to be trap. So we could go up to 130 and keep this keep this point six three in you know just to just to add something different to your tracks you know you don't always have to have to work at an even tempo um, this will also make it a little bit more difficult like if somebody hears your track and they try to recreate it and your time and your tempo is off by this much it's going to make it a lot more difficult to, for them to come in um try to completely replicate your vibe so once i've so once i've gone ahead and time stretch it again you can see this down here that means the computer's working so we want to go ahead and press Control b one more time now let's listen to what we got Okay, so we got it sounding nice. We got it, we got a good tempo. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click it, highlight it. I'm going to select split it grid. And what I have now, as you can see, is all of these different regions are are chopped up. Okay. Now if you, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with being meticulous with this. You see how this is um is chopped up just a little bit before so like that chop would play bad on your on your sampler so you could go ahead and just kind of and just kind of make some changes that could be beneficial to you know more conducive to you playing a smoother type of um 
type of staple. Like if you notice if you notice a big a big chop like that, you know, go ahead and fix it now because the next step is going to be to import this into a sampler and spread it across the keyboard. I want you to see this is a really complicated process, especially spread it across the keys. Really pay attention to this. You want to go to you want to right click on it. This is really complicated, guys. You want to go to audio and you want to go to send a new sample one. Did you get that? That's all it was. Now you have your that you, you have all of these chops starting at C3 laid out across your MIDI keyboard. Okay, so you can so now that you got your MIDI keyboard up, you can go to work. That is it. That's the easiest way you could possibly sample in a DAW short of you loading up a sample in something like Ableton and, and the DAW already doing this for you, right? But, um, you know, FL Studio isn't giving you nothing like this. Logic isn't giving you nothing like this. I definitely appreciate the hell out of Studio One for making this so simple because now i've um i kind of opened up a new um you know a new door to my production like for the longest time i've been a, i've been a compositional producer and now i just have not now that i know that because my thing with sampling was i didn't like sitting around listening to music all day and not making music now if i just hear a song that i like and i know that it's amazing i could use this method chop it up and get to work and that's what i'm all about so this is going to be um i'm going to do more videos like this this is going to be in the sampling made simple section of the website studio one tutorials.com it's coming very soon the more that you know you know how it is the more that i figure out about it the more excitement is going to come and the more i'm going to share with you so make sure to get a premium subscription to studio one tutorials.com if you're really interested in learning a lot about sampling because youtube makes it hard with the with, with the copyright um claims that they put on your video and stuff it's really a lot easier and I th i've already got like i think four sam four sampling videos up the 1970 soul sample is coming up next so come by the site check it out we're going to be dropping the trap soul drum pack very soon keep it simple don't be basic and we'll see y'all in the